Good afternoon. It is June the 5th, 2023. Uh, I'm Richard Moore, Executive Director of TCCTA. I have with me Beeman Floyd, our lobbyist here in Austin. Um, we're dealing with the legislative session that never ends. Uh, and I thought what we would do today, Beeman, is just do a quick wrap up on how things actually turned out in our last episode. We we're right on the end of the session. We had a good feeling about how things were going to wrap up, but why don't you uh, tell us uh, uh, how you know what we know at this point with the regular session now ended? Sure, I think um, the the general consensus about uh, higher education in the regular session is that the result was mixed, um, but mostly in a good way in terms of funding and uh, ongoing institutional support. Um, the uh, community colleges, as we know, um, got a, a significant amount of extra funding uh, in the legislative session, along with a structural reform of funding in House Bill 8, as we've been saying to you for months and months. Uh, now the work really begins on uh, fleshing out that structural um, allocation of the funding, but the good news is that extra dollars came along with it so that uh, um, most, if not all, of our institutions should see um, uh, an increase in funding in this um, biennium. And it was kind of remarkable how it all worked out that, that it went through the session virtually unchanged. I mean, the, it did. the um, original idea is what uh, we saw at the end. It was uh, one great big agreed to proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, uh, so we will uh, be working in earnest in the interim on making sure that the, the actual um, rules structure for uh, House Bill 8 is a good rule structure and, and supports the entire mission of uh, community colleges uh, around the state. Also, uh, there was a significant increase in research funding um, for emerging uh, research institutions here in Texas, and that strengthens the entire um, higher educational foundation here in Texas, we think, that we will be attracting uh, professors and talent and students uh, from uh, to to more of our uh, regional universities, not just to uh, the two flagship institutions as defined here. Uh, and so uh, we are pretty optimistic about the general financial support and structural support uh, for higher education here coming out of this session. Now, another one of the big issues we're dealing with had to do with tenure. Uh, there was a very contentious issue during the session. TCCTA was uh, very active uh, in in addressing it. Uh, how did that turn out? I, I, what I'm hearing is that there's n no more agreement now than there was during the session as to as to what happened. Uh, what do you sure, what do you right. see in the final bill that was passed? Well, what happened was uh, the original Senate bill eliminated tenure in Texas, which uh, there was general agreement in the higher ed community that that would be devastating mm -hmm. uh, for higher education in Texas. The House bill um, actually confirmed and named tenure um, as something that we have uh, in Texas. Um, it um, uh, created some statutory language about what tenure policies have to have, uh, which includes um, ongoing review and um, uh, clear uh, points of departure for dismissal of a, of a tenured professor. Um, it confirmed property rights of tenured professors in a way that we think was uh, ultimately pretty positive uh, in that it talked about their ongoing regular salary plus other interests associated with being a tenured professor in terms of the property interests of tenure. And so we think that if you look at the bill from the standpoint of its actual um, uh, relationship to tenure policies that are already out there, uh, we think that the bill was fine. Uh, we don't think that the bill created um, uh, a, a limitation on tenure that isn't already, um, that doesn't already exist in most institutional policies. If you view it from the standpoint of the Texas legislature has intruded into the space of tenure with statutory language, and now there's a section in the law that can be tweaked and noodled for every session from now till the end of time, yeah, that's a concern, that, it, that it's something that we're going to have to work on um, and something that we're going to have to deal with out into the future. So I would call the result on tenure, in my personal opinion, I would call it a mixed result, a certainly a victory over the original filed bill in terms of the preservation of tenure and a much more definition about it. Uh, but uh, now we have to work on it. 
um, well, that's got some and, and that's something I think we're always doing. When, whenever the legislature is talking about us, everybody gets nervous because I mean, mm -hmm. you, you never know what, what might happen. Uh, it is pretty remarkable, though, that an initiative uh, that began as an effort to ban tenure in Texas, which is what the lieutenant governor said prior to the session, uh, turned into writing tenure into state law for the first time right. and uh, instantiating it in law. So. Yeah, kind of a kind of a mixed bag and something we'll need to, to keep an eye on uh, going forward. Uh, we are also dealing with uh, CRT as an issue this session. Um, how did how did that turn out? Uh, didn't make it. Uh, the The bill did not get heard in the House, um, and uh, and so we are looking at it uh, on a go forward basis. We're having a series of special sessions uh, during the summer and probably into the fall. Uh, and there is a possibility that a CRT bill uh, might make it onto the call, depending on that's a decision of the governor. So we're going to have to be alert um, to the possibility of a CRT subject being included in the call, and then whatever bills would be associated with that in a special session right now. Uh, however, they're not. We'll let you know as soon as that happens, if it happens. And anybody tuning in to this conversation uh, right now to, for more information on CRT, critical race theory, uh, you can see our previous videos or visit the TCCTA blog for that. Yeah. Uh, so another acronym, DEI. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion? Sure. And how that turned out. A DEI bill did pass. Um, it had been a very, it started as a very harsh bill in the Senate aimed principally at the faculty. Um, during its journey through the Senate toward the House, it uh, became more aimed at institutions than at faculty. Uh, the real crux of that was whether or not DEI offices would be eliminated um, at institutions. And in the final pass bill, this bill did get heard in both the House, uh, both the Senate and the House, and passed finally. Um, DEI offices, as named, um, have been eliminated. So the legislature said that institutions are not allowed to have an office of diversity, equity, or inclusion anymore. And then attempt in the bill to prescribe how it is that universities will deal with issues related to equality and fairness and Title IX and um, other issues and, and initiatives that arise. Um, my personal opinion is that it is just very confusing uh, what, the, what the legislature did and what they expect of institutions. Uh, my heart goes out to people who are working honorably in DEI offices with titles related to diversity and equity and inclusion because they were treated very unfairly, in my opinion, by the legislature. Mm -hmm. And now the question is um, how institutions will go about their business with this strange bone in the throat of the law uh, that forbids you from doing certain things that are relevant and important to some of the functions of your institution. And that's something I think we're already starting to have conversations with folks around the state around what this might look like, how we're going to address it. The, I think one of the real vexing Parts of all this is that um, DEI involves so much of our mission. Um, how do we do our mission if we don't do some things that somebody might say you've crossed a red line? And that uh, that is going to be a, a series of tough conversations, and it's going to require a lot of courage on behalf of our institute. I mean, on the part of our institutions uh, and our and our members. So. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted on what we're hearing, and if we get any clarity, I was going to say, if we get any clarity coming out of Austin, <laughs> we'll let you know. Uh, uh, Beeman, talk a little bit about the uh, special session this summer. Uh, um, we had a little drama this past week. Um, what, what are we looking at? Yeah, we've got a. Uh, we're currently in a called session, um, the the first uh, called session of the eighty-eighth legislature. Um, the House and the Senate are fighting over property taxes and the structure for property tax relief. Um, the House uh, passed its version and adjourned, which they have a right to do, which leaves the Senate unable to pass a bill or take action. Uh, the only thing that the Senate can do is approve the House bill unamended right now. They're not showing any signs that that's something that they want to do. Uh, so we will likely um, go into yet another session and maybe a series of sessions during the summer and on this, a variety of issues. And this may have some impact on our local taxing authority, but it um, uh, seems to be mostly addressing K-12. I hear some uh, leaf blowers in the background. 
maybe hot air for all we know. Yes. Uh, uh, we will keep you posted though. Uh, there's still a lot happening, uh, a lot to stay abreast of. So uh, we'll keep you posted and uh, we'll be in touch with you soon. Thanks. Okay, thanks.